Coming up this week on Ride the Lightning, the Tesla Motors unofficial podcast, Model S gets a new set of wheels and a caller wonders if it presages the long rumor design refresh. Plus, another state tries to stop Tesla from selling cars. We learn a little bit about what it's like to work at Tesla and lots more. If you podcast, they will come. Welcome to Ride the Lightning, the Tesla Motors unofficial podcast, episode 32 for March 13th, 2016. My name is Ryan McCaffrey, also alongside the great Maggie the Boxer, who is currently gnawing on a post-dinner nylon bone, which you may hear in the background of the recording at some point this week. Anyway, indeed, March 13th, 2016 is today's show published date, which means T-minus 18 days and counting until the Model 3 event. It's getting so close. I'm getting super excited. Uh, I'm not super excited about having to derail from my pre-planned family vacation, but I've been waiting so long for this that I'm not going to complain. I can't wait to see this car. I can't wait to to put my $1,000 down. It's getting close. Before I kick off the show this week, I wanted to give a shout out to Brett, a Tesla Motors Club forum uh, listener user slash listener, (laughs) who was listening to this podcast, that's what I was trying to say, in his Tesla when he got rear-ended and then the other driver took off, a hit and run, and get this, he in his post he said that there were traffic cops right there, and the traffic cops told him to chase the other car. He wisely did not do that. I am honestly not sure I could have been so calm and collected in the moment, particularly If my dream car, that, you know, $100,000 dream car had just been hit, uh, I don't know if, you know, some sort of just rage or adrenaline would have taken over. But man, shout out to Brett for kudos for keeping your cool. But the good news is in the update from Brett, his car will be good as new soon. He's also installing the dash cams. Uh, so that he can record these things in the future. He can, he'll get the plate uh, next time, if it ever happens again. Hopefully it won't. Uh, so that's why a lot of Model S owners are doing, doing dash cams for this exact kind of reason, front and rear. Uh, Brett, I want to say, I hope you'll still listen to the show and that this doesn't create a negative association for the podcast with you, that you don't suddenly think, oh man, if I listen to this, I'm going to get hit. Uh, I, I'm, I'm making a joke of a, of an unfortunate situation, but, uh, yeah, glad Brett's okay and glad his car is going to be okay. Thanks for listening to the podcast though. I will say that it has been almost endless rain in the San Francisco area this week. I just drove back from, uh, our, my brother-in-law's house. We had went down and had dinner with them. They're, they're down in the South Bay. We're up here in the city and, Man, it's it's just a straight shot. It's all freeway. It's about 45 minutes of just all freeway. And it's just the pouring rain, so I've got my speed down to like 55. And you know, I'm wondering, it does how well does does autopilot work in the rain? Like it's as long as it can see the the line markers, right? So as I, the whole time I'm thinking, man, cuz it it's a you know, my family's in the car, uh, and I'm, it's, 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 a, it's stressful, at least it is for me, to drive in those kind of conditions because you got to watch, watch out for people doing dumb things that become a lot dumber in bad weather, and it's, you know, the visibility's impacted, and uh, it's just, it's tough. And I was just thinking, oh man, if I could be letting the car drive at 55 right now and just, and I could relax a little bit, just still keeping a close eye on everything, but just chilling back a little bit, that would have made a huge difference in my stress level getting home. So one day, I will, <laughs> I will look forward to that in about two years from now, hopefully. Uh, hopefully not more than that. Um, but yeah, it's, uh, I know this is, this is <laughs> I'm not supposed to say this since California is in a bad drought and all, but maybe, you know, maybe the, the, the weather gods will see fit to grant the Bay Area a, a dry winter, the year that I take delivery of my Model 3 so that I get nice weather to drive it around in when I first get it. Uh, before I start the rest of the show, we'll, we'll get to, we're going to do a couple 
a hotline, a couple phone calls to kick things off. But I want to remind you that the Model S referral program version 3.0 is still going. And if you use a referral code when you're buying your Tesla, you will get a $1,200 credit towards your home charging installation. So I wanted to give you Peter Kersgaard's code. He's from Denmark. He kindly wrote in and uh, was super genuine and said, if, if, uh, if I win the Model X, which every owner that has a referral used gets an entry into a raffle for a free fully loaded Model X. And Peter said that if, if somebody uses his code, uh, that he and and he were to win that raffle and win that Model X, that he would actually give it to me. And I have every reason to take him at his word. He seems like a very sweet person. He's written into the show a number of times. So uh, if you are listening to this, in fact, I know there was a gentleman on Twitter just today that was that was telling me he listens to the show and was looking to actually. He, he's like, man, I listen to your show, and now I'm gonna. I'm trying to decide between a 90D and a P90D. So I don't know if I can find it. But uh, anyway, the code to please use if you are listening to this and you plan to buy a Tesla in the next 30 or so days, the the short link is go to ts.la slash peter6387. That's ts.la slash peter Six three eight seven. You will get a twelve hundred dollar credit towards your paying for your home charging installation, and uh, Peter in Denmark will get an entry into the Model X raffle, which would then fall to me should he win. So please use that. And with that, let's get to the first couple phone calls again. I'm on, I want to break this up because I I love all of you. I'm getting such a great response. I really. I really feel like uh, the the you guys are really just starting to call in and have a good time and, and participate in the show. I really appreciate it. I really love it. Getting lots of phone calls again this week, so I will again split them up. I'm gonna we're gonna start with a couple here, then we'll get to the news for everybody that wants to to talk about the news, and then after the news, I'll do a few more phone calls. So first up is Joe, who calls in with a Model X sighting from the East Coast. Uh, you know, I've been, I talked about last week how I still haven't seen one out and about. So, uh, Joe, what did you see? Hey, Ryan. Uh, this is Joe, uh, first-time caller. Been listening to the show since it started. Uh, I was just calling to tell you that here on the East Coast, I did actually manage to see a Model X out in the open. Uh, my wife and I were shopping here in Allentown, Pennsylvania, and she noticed that there were two Teslas sitting across from where we parked, and one of them did actually turn out to be a Model X P90B. It did look like it was the signature red. So they are actually making it out to the East Coast, even if you haven't seen them on the West Coast. Just thought it was kind of interesting, and call and tell you you're doing a great job on the podcast. Joe, I'm glad to hear this. Uh, uh, the, the actual sort of relevant piece of information for the audience that I can tie into your call is that uh, VINs have now been issued that are up in the 5,000s. So hopefully that means that many more Xs are coming very soon and that X sightings will no longer be like unicorn sightings no matter where in the United States you live. So uh, glad you spotted one and look for a lot more Model Xs on the road soon if these VIN assignments are any indication. And by the way, I, I did find the uh, guy on Twitter today, the podcast listener. His name is Ahmed Abdullah. I hope I probably pronounced that wrong. I did my best. Ahmed, I do apologize if I, if I got your name wrong. But yeah, he tweeted me today and said, I'm thinking of getting the Model S, but not sure if I should go for the 90D or P90D. Wrote him back, and then he said, been listening to the podcast, and you've sold me on getting one. So, Ahmed, if you buy one, first of all, you're going to love it, no matter whether you go 90D or P90D. I've driven 85D, and it is quick. The 90D is roughly the same performance, if not even a tad better, because the traction is better. 
than the original P85. My cousin in Arizona has the P85, and if you get on the go pedal coming out of a, like around a corner or coming out of a, you know, out of a, like turning right or something from a, on, you know, through an intersection, you can wiggle the back end out. You can break the, the back end free a little bit, like just a little bit. But the, the D, the, the 90D is just planted. Like the car is just glued to the road and the zero to 60 is, you know, around, a, they, Tesla calls it 4.2, but many people have clocked it more like 3.9, really more 4.0 is about what's, what you can get. So, uh, you'll get really good performance out of the 90D and obviously tons of extra range compared to the P90D where you do take the range hit, but my goodness, of course you get the Uh, insane performance unless you decide to also check the ludicrous box in which case you're much deeper in financially but then no one can ever beat you off the line pretty much so uh, I hope that you enjoy whatever Model S you choose and please use Peter's uh, referral code give me a shot at a Model X because it would completely make my dream come true anyway Let's move on to the second and final call before we get to the news this week from Jay down in Australia, who is curious. He brings up a great discussion topic about wondering how Tesla is going to hit that $35,000 price point with specific regards to how that will fit in with customization options on the car. So Jay from down in Australia, take it away, sir. Hi, Ryan. It's Jay from Canberra, Australia. I just wanted to get your thoughts on the Model 3 regarding Tesla and their build-to-print philosophy. It seems that to get down to that $35,000 price point, that uh, they also have to look at how they um, make the vehicle in terms of customization. So it seems to me that there might be... um, some uh, likelihood for less choices to be made made for users uh, so that the price will be cheaper um, from a manufacturing perspective. And I'd like to get your thoughts on that. Thank you. You are correct, Jay. It's entirely possible that there will indeed be fewer options on Model 3, though, honestly, there really aren't a ton right now on Model S. You know, you've got paint, of course, wheels, interior color, interior trim, uh, sound system upgrade, panoramic roof, autopilot, though that's built into every car anyway. And then your battery size, uh, one or two motors, although even that is barely a choice anymore, although we, and we'll, though we know that'll be a choice on Model 3. Uh, ludicrous mode, and that's like, eh, and then I guess air suspension, that's pretty much it. I'm not sure which of those options they could get rid of on 3. I mean, uh... I guess air suspension. They they could decide, eh, you know, for the thirty five thousand dollar car, they're not even going to offer it as a as an you know upscale option. I hope they do because I would like to have it. I I would like the softer ride and the GPS aware suspension levels because I live in San Francisco where that can really come in handy. But you know, again, you've got to have interior options. You've got to have paint options. There's almost certainly going to be a smaller wheel size and a larger wheel size. My own personal speculation is that 17-inch wheels will be the base size and 19-inch will be the performance wheels. You'll have dual motor versus single motor, performance option, and I think we talked about it last week. Autopilot will probably, I mean, well, actually I won't say probably. I think Autopilot will be built into every car whether you enable it or not, just as it is with Model S now, because uh, that can, you know, that's with the with the volume of production that Tesla intends with Model Three, having all those autopilot enabled cars out there only helps them gather data exponentially quicker. Anyway, uh, we know that the primary way of getting the cost that, of getting the cost of this car down is going to be the Gigafactory. That's the secret sauce to the whole thing. Uh, Tesla could also use more steel components instead of all aluminum. They've, in fact, said as much that they're going to use more steel bits. Though they'll, of course, have to watch the weight of the car because there's the weight versus, you know, the size of the battery pack. There's all sorts of things, trade-offs and things to consider. 
in addition to with aluminum, the cost of working with the metal. So I'm not sure if Tesla has ever actually commented on this, but I would suspect that the overall profit margin per car on the Model 3 will be much smaller than the 25 plus percent it is on the S and X. There'll be the threes that are going to be sold much closer to cost, I would think, but they would make up for it in volume. So it's going to be interesting to see, but you raise a good point there, uh, some good food for thought. With that, I'm going to take a quick musical break, come right back, and we'll get to this week's news. Be right back after this. Welcome to the news. First up this week is something I missed right at the tail end of last week before I recorded, and that is Tesla ditching the stock 19-inch wheels on Model S, and they've introduced a new 19-inch silver stream wheel as the new default. They're basically mini turbines, every bit as much, if not more so, than the Cyclones, which are a $2,500 option currently, and the Cyclones are not a 19-inch wheel as well. In fact, they're so much like the turbines, and they're so similar to the Cyclones, that I personally can't imagine why anybody would spend $2,500 on the Cyclones. So with that in mind, I am wondering now if the Cyclones are going to be phased out altogether or possibly replaced with another mid-priced wheel upgrade option that's probably still a 19-inch wheel but just a different style. Personally, if you haven't taken a look at them yet, they're right in the design studio. So if you just go right on teslamotors.com, Personally, I think that these slipstreams look better than the old 19s, but obviously wheel style is almost 100% subjective. Uh, Still, regardless of what you think of them, all three current wheel options now have a very similar design language. It would seem that uh, Tesla chief designer Franz von Holzhausen and or his team are tired of looking at the five-spoke 19-inch wheels all over town down in L.A., and would prefer to see the turbine style wheel on every car. Now on a side note, owners have posted on TMC that those five spoke 19s are actually a lot more of a pain to clean than they look. And I know it's easy for me to say this since I don't own a Model S and am thus not faced with the prospect of paying a fortune for 21 inch tires, but I personally would absolutely go with the 21 inch turbines costs and tread life be damned. To me, they just look too good. They look too good. To me, they the 21-inch turbines really finish the aggressive look of the Model S in a way that uh, the, any of the 19-inch styled wheels just don't. But then again, <clears throat> pardon me, I also don't have to worry about snow here in the Bay Area, so it's even easier for me to say that. Uh, than many Tesla owners, but I'm having having trouble today, boy. Anyway, I really hope Tesla keeps the turbine-style wheel for Model 3, because I think it looks really nice, it's somewhat futuristic, and honestly, now that they're also offering the turbines on Model X, of course, that's the 22-inch wheel option, the uh, top-end wheel option on Model X, the turbines are this close to becoming part of Tesla's overall design language. So maybe we will see them on Model 3. I guess, again, T minus 18 days until we find out. Now, of course, the prototype that we'll see on March 31st, whatever wheels it has on it are certainly not at all guaranteed to make the final version of the car. But if it is sporting turbines, that means there's a decent chance that that they will. All right, our next call, uh, actually, pardon me, I wanted to take a call on this from a gentleman. I couldn't quite pick his name out. I believe his name's Amalor, but if I've mispronounced that, if I didn't get that right, I, I sincerely apologize. He's from Houston, and he's wondering, he, bring, he poses an interesting question. I'll let him take it away. Go ahead, sir. Hey, Ryan, uh, this is Amalor Beckham on Bias, a Tesla enthusiast in Houston, Texas. I wanted to leave a quick comment or, I guess, a question. 
uh, about the new slipstream wheels that Tesla has announced as a default wheel for the Model S. Do you think that move indicates that there's a revamp or a refresh coming for the Model S here in the next few weeks? Thanks. Enjoy the show. Bye-bye. You know, this is, that's a great call because, honestly, the thought of the slipstreams indicating a design refresh hadn't even occurred to me. You know, that refresh of the S has been rumored for quite some time, really out of, with no factual basis. I mean, it's, it's really just hearsay, but it's this rumor that doesn't seem to want to go away. Now, your theory is an interesting one. I would personally lean towards no, mostly for this reason. If the slipstream wheels were part of a refresh, wouldn't they have waited to reveal them as part of said refresh? Wouldn't, you know, putting them on the cars now take away from some of a potential refresh's thunder? But then again, Tesla has a long history at this point of simply making upgrades and changes to the car whenever they're ready rather than waiting for some arbitrary time like a new model year or, for instance, a body design refresh. So you might be right after all. I'm still leaning towards no on this one, but you've moved the you've moved my needle on this further back towards the middle with your call. So excellent call there. Uh, next story comes to us. I know you are. Are you guys getting tired of hearing these stories as much as I'm uh, getting a bit weary of doing them? It's another week, another state level legal battle that Tesla has needs to engage in. This time, the Virginia Automotive... Wow, could I butcher that more? The Virginia Automobile Dealers Association has filed a lawsuit against Tesla, claiming Tesla and the state's DMV commissioner, Richard D. Holcomb, violated a 2013 agreement that Tesla could not own or operate a second dealership in the state. There's already one until August of 2017. Tesla, of course, claims the suit is, quote, entirely without merit. Here is Tesla's statement, quote, the agreement expressly states that it does not have any effect on any future application that Tesla may file and does not restrict Tesla from further petitioning the DMV for additional stores. That is what Tesla has done, and both Tesla and the DMV have complied with all laws in doing so. We will vigorously defend against Vada's lawsuit, that would be the Virginia Automobile Dealers Association's lawsuit, and continue to fight for our customers and consumer freedom in Virginia, end quote. Now, you know, if I were prone to conspiracy theories, I might come to the conclusion that all of these state-level dealer difficulties happening virtually simultaneously, talking about Indiana, talking about Connecticut, talking about Michigan and now Virginia, etc. I might think that all of these happening at the same time wasn't a coincidence. That maybe it was all some sort of bigger concerted effort. That maybe nada is in the pockets of big oil, which is in the pockets of the Koch brothers. Now, really, I'm not sure if it runs that deep, but I will say it wouldn't surprise me at all if this was part of a larger effort by the North American uh, Dealers Association at the very least. On this note, I wanted to thank a commenter on Fortune's website who uh, commented in reply to this story, Russell L. I wanted to thank him for reminding me that Tesla and Tesla supporters like me and everybody listening to this podcast aren't the only ones who think the idea of Tesla selling direct to consumers is a no-brainer. The federal government agrees too. Guess what? In a blog post on the Federal Trade Commission website last May, the FTC wrote, quote, For several years now, there have been reports of the challenges faced by Tesla Motors in selling its luxury electric cars directly to consumers. In state after state, the company has faced legislative and litigation resistance to its business plan to sell its products without using a network of third-party dealers like other auto manufacturers. Over the past year, and this is now from May of 2015, 
Over the past year, FTC staff have urged in a blog post and comment letters to legislators that state prohibitions against direct consumer auto sales by manufacturers should be eased. Our point, states should allow consumers to choose not only the cars they buy, but also how they buy them. So there you go. The federal government is on our side on this one. This is a state by state. This is the the North American Dealers Association. Maybe it runs deeper than that. Who knows if you if you want to dig into it more. But these these uh, one after the other, state by state by state, does not. This can it seemingly is a little much for to be a coincidence. Finally, this week in Tesla news, Steve Jurvetson. A Tesla investor and the owner, by the way, if you're not familiar with Steve, he is the owner of Model S Founder Series VIN number 00001. He has VIN number one. If you uh, happen to, there's a video of Steve taking delivery of his car from from 2012, back when, uh, and, and he had like, it was, it's a signature red car and all like a bunch of Tesla staff. He took it, he took delivery at the factory. He takes the car and just tons of factory employees are there applauding. It was a, it's a really cool look up the video if you haven't seen it. And by the way, if you're curious about this, the story goes like, why doesn't Elon have VIN number one, which of course Elon does have VIN number one of Model X. If you're curious about this, the story goes that there was a boardroom meeting that Steve was in, and of course Elon was in, and they sort of locked down all the details of the car, and Steve raised his hand and said, wait, so we have a price, we're all set? And I, you know, Elon in the room said, yes. So Steve took out his checkbook, wrote a check, and slapped it down on the table and said, I'm first in line. I don't know if he actually said that, but... And then Elon had to go... <laughs> Elon had to settle for VIN number two in that scenario. Um, <clears throat> now, uh, where I was going with this, <laughs> besides the background on Steve, anyway, so Steve posted an infographic from the San Francisco Chronicle that includes the results of a survey of tech company employees about a few different things, uh, one of which, meaningfulness of your work. Guess who ranks number two? That would be Tesla. Guess who's number one? SpaceX. <laughs> Guess which company ranks number two in uh, is, is meaningfulness of your work, but also num- ranks number two in stressful environment. That would also be Tesla. Guess who's number one again? Also <laughs> SpaceX. So it seems that Elon Musk fosters a similar culture at both companies, which I would sum up as pressure, but worth it. Now, my completely subjective interpretation of this data is that it seems like Tesla is the kind of place where you would do, it would be some of the hardest work of your career, but also the most memorable and satisfying. That it would be one of those things where you, you'd always look back on your time there uh, in a, in a, <clears throat> in a you know, loving and, and sort of fond way. Of course, I think it would have to be It would have to be meaningful for employees to continue putting up with the high stress. Now, I will tell you, I had a chance to meet a small group of Tesla employees from the factory recently. And I, not only, it was just cool to meet them, but uh, I, I just was so happy to meet them because I wanted to tell them all the same thing, which I did one by one as I, as I was meeting, sort of talking, mingling with each one. I told them all the same thing. I said to every one of them, thank you for doing what you do because no one else in the car world will do it. And every single one of them, they all really were humble and they seemed genuinely appreciative to hear that. And I was, I was just happy to be in a position to get to tell them that right to their faces because, you know, while I, I work in a totally different field doing what is, ultimately on the future of mankind kind of scale, not particularly meaningful work. 
Uh, I mean, I take a lot of pride in what I do, and I've been doing it for a while, but, you know, I, I write about toys, which is a great job, don't get me wrong, it's very fun, but it's hardly getting humanity to Mars or electrifying the automotive industry so that our future generations don't have as much of a have an atmospheric problem but uh anyway uh i can still i can still relate a bit to working really hard on something and having people attack you for it as tesla is often attacked by the the fudders the fuddy duddies or nada or whoever so and i and i also know how much it means to me to be told to my face that my work is appreciated by someone completely outside of your sphere. So uh, the point is, if you, if you get to meet anybody who works on these cars, who works uh, on Teslas, who builds them, or, or contributes to building them in any way, be sure to tell them thank you, because I'll bet you it'll make their day. I'll bet you it'll, it'll mean a lot to them. All right, let's come right back. That's this week's top Tesla news stories. Got a few more phone calls for you in the Ride the Lightning hotline right after this. All right, let's do a couple more calls. Three of them, in fact, from the Ride the Lightning hotline, which if you would like to participate in, if you've got a question, comment, discussion topic for the podcast, Give me a ring anytime. You just leave a message. It's a toll-free number. You can dial 24-7 whenever you want. You can call it or Skype it. The number is 1-888-989-8752. If it helps you remember it a little more easily, it's 1-888-989-TSLA. And by the way, if you know someone special with an upcoming birthday, anniversary, graduation, or some other special occasion, you can give them a unique gift of recorded voices from friends and family telling them why they're special. The recordings can be podcasted, such as what I do with it, or put onto a keepsake. Please visit lifeonrecord.com to learn more. First up, Andy from Toronto comments on Canadian pricing for Model X. Andy, go ahead. Uh, hey, Ryan, this is Andy from uh, Toronto, Ontario. Wanted to uh, say that I love your show. Um, Model X pricing, has Tesla gone insane? Uh, we're looking at almost $260,000 Canadian, including tax, for a fully loaded Model X. Uh, and that is an insane pricing, which I don't believe anybody has expected. Um, Elon previously had said that he, the Model X and the Model S pricing differential would be about uh, $5,000, and that doesn't seem to be the case. A base Model S70D is 102000 Canadian, and a base Model X70D is 119000 Canadian. That's a difference of almost 17000 Canadian dollars. So I'm feeling frustration. A lot of Canadians are also feeling frustration on the the forums. I wanted to know, get your opinion uh, on this topic. Uh, Canadians are definitely feeling the pinch here. But love your show, and I'm really happy and I listen to it every week. Ugh, that is indeed painful, Andy. Now, I don't know if Tesla has to pay some sort of import tariff uh, or if there's some other reason that the cars are seeing a price hike for the Canadian market. It's extra unfortunate because of all places in North America, you guys could really use the X with your Canadian winters. I would suggest making your voice heard on this. Do so politely and respectfully, but also definitively. You know, e email just... Uh, Email customer support at Tesla. Just you know, get them, get them to hear your concern. I mean, you you obviously you support Tesla. You want to own the vehicle, but the price of the car is unfair for Canadian customers. Uh, now, here's something, just a thought that occurred to me. Perhaps this is a totally ignorant statement. In which case, I'm going to pre-apologize right now. But since you're in Toronto. Could you order and take delivery of the car in, say, Cleveland, where there's a Tesla store? Because uh, I looked, I, there's, there's not a store in Buffalo 
which seems to be clo- the closest major American city to Toronto. And, of course, there's Detroit, but, uh, you know, we all know the Michigan story right now. But Cleveland, is it, could you do that? Is that, is that possible? Uh, you know, take, could you take delivery there and then pay the American price and then bring it home? I don't know. It's, I, again, apologies if that's a dumb, a dumb idea, but I'll just throw it out there. I'm not afraid to look dumb. I'm just, I'll, I'll do my best to help. Uh, while we're talking Tesla in Canada, let's go to Jason from Ottawa, who has some more detail on the Ontario EV incentive program from the government that uh, we got clarified a bit on last week. So, Jason from Ottawa, go ahead, sir. Hey, Ryan, it's uh, Jason from Ottawa, Ontario, Canada here, not to be confused with the Jason from last week from Ontario, Canada. Um, I just wanted to give a little more detail on the Ontario Electric Vehicle Incentive Program that he talked about, uh, the, re- the rebate. Um, uh, it has a few conditions with it um, that you must meet to get the maximum rebate possible. Uh, first of all, your car has to have a manufacturer-suggested retail price uh, less than $75,000. Uh, if, if the car is more than $75,000, you only get a maximum of $3,000 in rebates. So I'm hoping that with the conversion to Canadian when the car sells here, that it will be less than that. Uh, Presumably, their thinking is that if you can afford a car over $75,000, then you don't need a rebate. Second of all, in order to get the full $13,000 rebate, the car must have a battery pack of over 16 kilowatt hours, which isn't a problem for the Tesla. So hopefully, uh, fingers crossed, the car comes to Canada for less than $75,000 Canadian so that I can get the full rebate as I fully intend to put my money down to get in line. I love all your podcasts. Keep up the good work. Uh, Take care. What can I say except that is super helpful, Jason. Thank you so much for calling in. That, that, I have now learned a lot about uh, buying a Tesla in Canada over the last couple weeks, which is really good information to have in case anybody asks me about it in the future. I love it. I love the, the help here. Happy to learn something. And uh, I'm glad that you should be able to get your full rebate on uh, Model 3 unless, I guess, I'm, well, I guess unless you kit it all the way out, then it's probably going to be over the 75000 Canadian. But uh, I guess depending on the Model 3 you plan to get, you may hopefully qualify for that whole thing. Finally this week, uh, another, another open question f- to the floor, and that is Gabriel from Finland who is curious about the CPO program in Europe. I'm going to let Gabriel have the floor here. Gabriel, go ahead. Hi, Ryan. Gabriel from Finland here, a British guy living in Finland. Waiting for CPO Europe to open. I can see that in America you can get some good deals on Model S for 45, 50,000 US dollars. Any ideas? Any news? Anybody know anything about this? CPO Europe would be really handy. Hey, keep up the good work and uh, talk soon. So yes, I will again look to the audience who has proven very, very helpful week after week. Uh, I could not find anything about the CPO program in Europe. Has anybody out there heard when Tesla's certified pre-owned program may launch in Europe? Please feel free to call in or email. The email is, of course, teslapodcast at gmail.com. And as I mentioned a minute ago at the top of this segment, the toll-free call-in number where you just call in, leave a message anytime. You can call or Skype, I should clarify. 1-888-989-8752. Be right back to wrap up a couple things right after this. Maggie the boxer is just over there, over there nesting on the couch. There's a there's a blanket, big blanket on the couch. Does anybody else's dog do this? Where she just, what is she, now? She's just looking at me because she heard her name. But where they'll just take the blanket and then kind of dig at it with their paws. Now, now she hops off this. She's been called out. They like dig at it with their paws and pick it up with their teeth and rearrange it to exactly how they want it. I always crack up whenever she does that. Anyway. 
Uh, we're just about at the end of the show here. Please follow me on Twitter if you don't already. I'm at DMC underscore Ryan. You can always email me if it won't fit in 140 characters. The email address is teslapodcast at gmail.com. If you're a video gamer, you can find me on IGN.com each and every day doing something or other. Every Wednesday is my Xbox podcast that I lead with my team called Podcast Unlocked. You can find my t-shirt website at nerdstyles.com. Got about 10 video game slash geek inspired t-shirt designs as well as a coffee mug. Uh, Be sure to check out and subscribe to Dave T's weekly Tesla newsletter. It's a very easy website to remember, teslaweekly.com. It's a very useful resource and again, costs you nothing. If you haven't heard yet, the podcast, this one that is, is now on Stitcher. Look in the Games and Hobbies section and the subcategory Car Enthusiast. If there's anywhere else you think this podcast should be, please let me know, and I'm happy to look into getting it there. And uh, speaking of which, in fact, tune in in your Tesla, in your Model S or Model X. You can get the show. Got to jump through one little hoop. Uh, You got to add it to your favorites. So go on the TuneIn website, search for Tesla Podcast or Ride the Lightning, You'll find it, just follow the show, and then it'll show up in your favorites in the car. And you can easily listen to it there, as my friend Jeff does, and as Brett was doing prior to some horrible person rear-ending him and then taking off and never being held accountable for it. Karma will come back around on that person, I'm confident. Finally, I'd like to thank the wonderful folks, as I do each and every week. Teslarati.com is a great resource for Tesla fans, it's a site run by Tesla owners. Uh, it's, it keeps track of everything going on in the world of Tesla. It's a, it's a lovely website. It's, it's actually, it's, even the design of it's nice. Uh, Gene and the team have kindly been uh, mentioning the podcast there. They, they list it each and every week a new episode comes out. Gene, super appreciate you and your team helping to get the word out about this podcast. That's all I, that's all I can ask for, right? Like, is to get the word out. Then people will, you know, if they listen to it, maybe they won't like it, maybe they will, but that's the challenge, is just getting people to hear it, cutting through, the, because there's there's 7 million podcasts for everything. So just just getting people to hear it is is a victory unto itself, and I appreciate the fine folks at teslarati.com for helping me do that. That is it for episode number 32 of Ride the Lightning, counting it down. Oh man, Model 3 is getting so close. I've seen, I have, I still haven't seen a render out there that I'm super in love with, but um, that's okay because Tesla already, I'm sure they, I can't imagine they saw a render and went, let's do that. They have their own ideas. It's going to be curious to see what the idea is, what the final idea is that they're going for. It's getting close. We're going to continue talking about it. Keep calling in with your questions, your comments, your show ideas, uh, everything happening in the world of Tesla. I just have such a ball covering it. I'm again. I, I describe myself as that that kid with his with his face pressed up against the glass, looking inside the Tesla world. Uh, but when Model Three is unveiled on March 31st, and I put my thousand dollar deposit down, I'm finally going to get. Uh, a foot in that door in you know to to one day be on the other side of that window and be able to do an even better show for you from being able to relate to everything as an actual Tesla owner but hopefully folks appreciate my perspective as you know just a just a, a raving lunatic of an enthusiast who just believes in these cars and in this company and uh, and the, the, not only what they're doing, but the way they're doing it. I love it. I mean, I just, I love reading about Tesla every day. I, sp- I spend time every day reading about Tesla. Is, that is no lie. And it's fun, man. It's just, it's, uh, it's, it's just fun for me. I've always, always been into cars ever since I was a little kid. And not a lot of them have really sort of gotten into my bones the way that Tesla has. And uh, I'm, having, I'm having a blast doing this podcast. 32 episodes in. Here's to 3,000 more. Anyway, I'm rambling now. I'm going to hit the road. I will see you all again this time next week. Happy electric motoring.